Morning, men. Good to have y'all with us this morning. We're going to hit it running this morning. I'm, I'm uh, laying a foundation today, a little bit of a foundation, because I'm telling you what, next week's message, um, just so you know, you might want to invite some people, because I'm going to tell you something about next week's message, and I don't like to really uh, be preemptive or jump too too quickly. That's uh, exposing the enemy way too quick, right? But I will tell you this, that next week's message, if you leave here unchanged, after my prayer with the Lord yesterday, then then something's wrong. But I feel like some foundation has to be set first before you hear the message next week, because I promise you this, uh, it's going to get your attention. And uh, what gets your attention gets your direction, and hopefully it'll get your destination, right? We say that a lot of times. Welcome online, those of you who are with us online this morning. Long weekend. Some people are recovering this weekend. And now when I say recovering, I'm not talking about from a drunk-infested weekend. All right? We're men of God. We don't do that. But now you may have decided to sleep in a little bit, and it may have been hard to get up this morning. I don't know. I don't know how you live your life. But let me say something. Your life's about to be changed. Listen to the Word of God. Watch what the Word of God speaks to you. Those of you who are joining us for the first time from Wind River this morning, uh, a couple of things. Just remember, uh, remember that uh, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and make sure that you say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, every single morning and watch what God does in your life. So with that, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer and we'll start getting this foundation laid for next week's message. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this, your time, for this, your energy, for this, your purpose. Lord, uh, grow us up and send us forth in the power of your spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Too much of us are not paying attention to what we invest in. We're making investments in this life. We make investments, we say, in our children. We make investments in our wives. We make investments in uh, our finances. We make investments all, all around. But uh, today I want to talk to you about having spiritual investments and these spiritual investments and how, inter how eternal these investments are. <clears throat> Some of us spend too much time investing in what others think about us. I mean, it's true. I, I combed my hair this morning so that you guys would think a little higher of me, all right? Uh, but we do. We spend so much time. I mean, we invest in the world, and we're more concerned about what others think instead of the heavens and investing in the heavens and what God will say about us when and if we get there. Now, I put an if there because next week's message, I'm going to leave a big if. All right, because we don't we don't talk about the the scary things, the fiery things. We're always talking about the grace of God, and I really want to lay a foundation for next week's message because so many of us are concerned about what others think. We really are not concerned about what heaven thinks. We all want to hear the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus say, "Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master upon that day." But too often times, really, what we're after is this day which is not eternal unless we do things eternal today. And we're looking for that statement from our fellow brothers, from, from our workers or our coworkers or whoever it may be. We're trying to get their approval and hoping they say, well done, well done, good and faithful. You, you, you look good today or, or you're strong today or whatever. And we're going to talk about how our strength is fading and those types of things next week. But I'm telling you, it's a great message just laying some foundation, we have to be concerned about our eternal things for this day. Investment strategies are found all throughout books today. They're found all throughout the news today. You can go on and watch any type of investment strategy that you want to watch or that you want to read about. But I, today, what I'm going to be talking to you about are making investments that are kingdom-minded. In John chapter 5, verse 44 Jesus said these words. He said, how can you believe when you receive glory from one another and you do not seek the glory that is from the, own, from the one and only God? And notice what Jesus says. He says, hey, even in his day and time, you're just seeking the glory of man. You're not even concerned about seeking the glory of God. You know who he's talking to right here? The religious scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. He talks to them about dressing up in white, as whitewashed tombs. You look good on the outside, but on the inside, you're a wreck. All right, you're, you're making some what looks like spiritual investments, but in reality, they're temporal investments. In Luke chapter 16, verse 15, it's, Jesus said, he said to them, you are those who justify yourselves in the sight of men. You ever been that one? Justifying yourself in the sight of men? 
I was on the tractor last night and just rolling, just things going good last night. You know, I've really had a good little three, four days, no breakdowns, everything. Use the cutting torch one time is all I've had to do. The rest of the time, man, I'm rocking. Last night, and, and my, my prayer partner shows up, middle of nowhere. I'm like, what are you doing? He's well, I just need to sit with you for a minute. I was like, all right, well, let's sit. And he's got a Jeep, and we got in a Jeep, and we started driving around a little bit over there, and sure enough, there's a snake, and I made an investment in that snake right in the head. He was impressed, by the way. <clears throat> My point is, is that he's asking questions as an accountability partner, and so oftentimes I'm trying to justify myself in what I'm doing or what I'm not doing. You've been there. But if you continue to read in Luke chapter 16, Jesus goes on. He said, but God knows your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is detestable in the sight of God. Now, that's an amazing statement to me that Jesus says. He says that which is highly esteemed among men is detestable in the sight of God. We're always looking for other men to esteem us. We want to walk through this life and be highly esteemed. We want to be highly respected. But that should not be our ultimate goal. Now, there's no doubt that Jesus tells us as we grow that we are to grow in three ways, that we're to grow in stature and in favor with God and man. That's how Jesus grew. And so when Jesus is found at the temple teaching, that's how he was growing up. And so we should have that. But in our favor, we should not look for the favor of man outside the favor of God. Let me say that again. You should not look for the favor of man outside the favor of God. It's so important. We become so, such earthly vessels, such fleshly vessels. Guys, what would God say to you and about you today? We're called to be men of God. We're called to be God pleasers, not people pleasers. You've heard this before. But we make so many investments in so many things in this world that are really on the temporal side and not on the eternal side. If you could go back in life and look at your financial investments, I bet, I bet some of us would say, man, I should have jumped on that Apple band, bandwagon way back. Windows was a good one. Dell was good for a time. Home Depot exploded for a time. Cisco was a good one. See, all the would have, could have, and should have in this life. But have you ever gone back and said, hey, I wish I would have made a more spiritual investment in me? a more spiritual investment in my wife, a more spiritual investment in my children. The Lord calls us to deeper waters, men. Life is very, very temporal, and we spend so much time trying to influence one another instead of, or trying to invest, to impress one another instead of investing in the things that really matter. And and next week, you'll see how temporal life is. Ralph Waldo Emerson, he said, money often costs too much. That's kind of funny, isn't it? An investment, uh, Benjamin Franklin said this. He said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. It's good to be knowledgeable. You want to be around people like that. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Anybody know who said that? We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Who said that? Winston Churchill figured there'd be somebody in here who knew that. So Jesus has a lot to say about where we make investments. And like I said, too many of us are attempting to make investments in the temporal and not concerned about making investments in the spiritual and in the eternal. <clears throat> where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. In 1974, a man by the name of Harry Chapin, y'all ever heard of him? You're old enough? All right, well, I'll tell you, I don't know him either. But I know this song. My child arrived just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way, but there were planes to catch and bills to pay. He learned to walk while I was away. And, and he was talking. Man, it's tough. He was talking for I knew it. And as he grew, he'd say, I'm going to be like you, Dad. You know, I'm going to be just like you. My son, turned, my son turned 10 just the other day. He said, thanks for the ball, Dad. Come, let's play. Can you teach me to throw? I said, not today. I got a lot to do. He said, that's okay. And he walked away, but his smile never dimmed. He said, I'm going to be like him. Yeah, you know I'm going to be like him. So much truth within this song because James states that life is but a breath. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. And like I said, next week, I'm going to have a visual image that's going to get your attention about this. 
Uh, you know, uh, I went to the doctor. Uh, I've been to two, three doctors over the past three weeks. Now, I don't go to doctors. My wife will tell you I don't go to doctors. So my wife scheduled me appointments with the doctors. And she, because she's getting tired of me, uh, about one to three every night I cough. I just have a cough fit. And so I'm up. I was up this morning from 1.30 to 4.30. And so uh, it just happens. And so I just have this scratch. So she said, we got to get that figured out. So I go to the doctor. And and the funny story is, you know, I, I said this Sunday in the first service, but uh, I, I go over to the VA and I have been waiting on this appointment for like a month and a half. And I had to re-register and all this other stuff over at the VA that I've never had to do before. Thank you, Biden. Anyway, I'm not making that investment. No, but anyway, um, but in saying that, what was funny is that I, I told you that I had made an investment in some chicken fried steaks on Wednesday night and Thursday morning at seven o'clock, they had to draw my blood and my cholesterol wasn't just high, it wouldn't even register. So they were ready to like put me in the hospital and drain some blood. Something's going on with you. Why haven't you had a heart attack or a stroke? Well, this is what happens to us so oftentimes. We, we don't think about even the physical investment sometimes that we make. Our lives are temporal. <clears throat> you know, we have to take care of ourselves physically, spiritually, and most important, in a godly manner, because God made an investment first in us men. In Matthew chapter 6, very famous, you guys be familiar with this. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So he's saying make an investment in heaven. Because like I say, too many of us are making investments in one another. Look at how this contrasts to this. In Luke 16, 15, Jesus said, you are those who justify yourselves in the sight of men, but God knows your heart. In other words, you are always trying to justify yourself and look good before men. Over here, Jesus shifts gears just a little bit, and he says, the problem with, with looking at, at making investments in yourself so that you look good among men is you are not storing up treasures in heaven. You're not even concerned about heaven. But you should be, because in heaven, neither moth nor rust destroys what you invest in. It's eternal. Verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So then your eyes, if your eyes clear, your whole body will be full of light. Now, verse 23, I've never seen this until I put this uh, message together <clears throat> uh, a few weeks ago. It says this, verse 23, but if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? There's, there's a play on words. Did y'all see it? If the light in you is darkness, I didn't know that darkness contained a light. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. Verse 24, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. And here's the truth. <clears throat> we organize our hearts around what we feel like is best for us. Whatever is best for me, that's what I'm going to organize my life around. And most importantly, I'm going to organize my heart around. And we make our investments this way. So Jesus is saying, too many of you, organize your lives, <clears throat> excuse me, organize your hearts around things that are in the temporal and not in the spiritual. You're more concerned, once again, about making investments that make you look good before man instead of make you look good before God. This analogy of sight, it explains a couple of things that our hearts got to see in order for us to process light. We have eyesight and we have heart sight. You, you remember that old song we used to sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord? Key of E. Buster. <laughs> Buster and I played that together, I think, a handful of times. Yeah, so here we go. We have eyesight and we have heart sight. As we use our eyesight to organize our path, so we use our heart sight to organize our life. My body goes where my eyes are looking. So if I ask you a question today, what do your eyes see? What are they looking at? It's a good question to ask because oftentimes your body will follow. If my eyesight is bad, I cannot direct and organize my path. My body, my body follows my eyes. Uh, about a year ago, I was headed down to the hospitals, and, and uh, I noticed this blind lady walking on the side of the streets down from the hospital, and she had that stick. You know, she had her 
She had her walking stick and was out in front of her, and I saw her stop, and she was very confused. She didn't know where she was, so I pulled off the side of the road, and as I was walking up, I knew her. As a matter of fact, I've known her since she was a little bitty. We, we went through school together, and in school, in high school, we honestly were pretty good friends. We ran in the same fr- friend group and everything. I said, Renee, what are you doing? She, and immediately, she's not seen me in 15 years, maybe longer, maybe 20 years. Oh, thank you, Michael. Maybe, maybe 20 years, 15 or 20 years. And what happens is, is uh, when I said Renee, that's all I had to say. You know what she said? Curtis, I'm so glad you showed up. I'm lost. It's easy to do when you can't see. Sometimes it's that practical, right? And she said, I've gone this, this, this way many times, but I, I, someone stopped and I was visiting with them. I didn't recognize them. I didn't know them. And then when I turned around, I, I, I just some way changed directions. I was listening to the cars just to make sure I was off the street. You see, sometimes we need someone to intervene for us to show us where our eyesight is located and also to show us where our heart side is located. Do you have anyone in your life that can take you by the arm and can say, hey, this is the direction. Now head down this path and you're going to do much better in life. Those type of people are concerned with spiritual investments and they're concerned about your spiritual investment as well, men. You see, our lives follow our hearts. If our hearts are full of light, we organize life around the source of that light, which is God's kingdom and God's heavens. It becomes an eternal investment, men, heavenly investments. If the light in us is darkness, then we organize life around the source of that darkness, which many times is mammon. We're just concerned about making it through the day. We live, we live in a hand-to-mouth culture what I can feed myself today, what I can get today. Boy, I, I, I so want to jump into next week's message right here. Well, let me just, you want me to dive in? Well, let me say this. Be familiar with the Lord's Prayer next week because it's going to become very important to this. I mean, um, give us this day our daily bread. The reason why I believe uh, Jesus says that, hey, feed me enough today to do the ministry that's at hand that I have enough energy to to make my eternal investment today. But that's that's going to really be carried throughout next week's message. So here's the truth. How can someone, how can Jesus say, if then the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Because darkness does not contain light. Let me tell you what he's throwing that at and who that he's throwing that at. He's throwing that out to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the religious scribes. You look like light among men. You look like light among peers. You look like light among those who come up and pay you to pray for them. But that is not light. There is a darkness that far overshadows because you're more concerned about what you put in your pocket and that temporal investment that has been made in you that you'll make in some kind of something, some type of mammon, than you are really being eternal and making an eternal vestment into someone else. Your prayers are just thrown up. You, you, you're really in this for the money. You ever know preachers that are in it for the money? You better not say my name. Look, mammon, mammon is materialism. And God, look at this, and God, mammon and God are mutually exclusive. You can't serve both. You will wind up hating one and loving the other. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be as well. One brings righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. One creates anxiety and distress and destroyed immune systems. Mark Rutland. He was the former president of ORU, or Roberts University. And I had two friends of mine that graduated there and uh, um, still friends of mine today. And, and he said something. He said, in an Amish ki- kitchen in bird in hand, Pennsylvania, in the heart of Dutch country, I saw, I saw a sign I'll never forget. Too soon old, too late smart. When I saw it, I thought it was memorable, but hardly meaningful because I was only 21 when I read it. Now I'm 64, and the words are very meaningful, but I can barely remember the farmhouse. Isn't that interesting? Sometimes we're too soon old and too late smart. Look, we need to pay attention to where our treasure 
is, where our investments in this life, men, are being made. We need to re-identify many times our, our true treasure, why we do what we do, what our call is, where we're going in life. You see, Jesus tells us that it is not a smart tr strategy to store up earthly treasure. Why? Because moths and rust do what? They destroy it. We all know today that, that uh, you know, I'll tell you a funny story. I, I, I type up all my sermons. Uh, Eloise makes fun of me because most of them are word for word. I'm talking just, and sometimes I, I speak hick. That's a third type of language out there. And I'm hoping one day I'll get hired by the universities because some of them obviously don't understand it, but they'd be much more wise if they did. But here's the truth. Um, she, she makes fun of me, and, and I always type them up and everything. Well, uh, this, is, this is kind of a, a crazy thing. I store my sermons on hard drives, and I didn't even know this, that a thumb drive, Joshua told me this here a while back. He said, you know thumb drives uh, have limited times that you can use them. And I'm like, I'm going to lose all. He said, we need to take all your stuff down and put it on, a, on like a real hard drive. And I was like, I don't know, you know, and all this. But let me tell you a funny story that I did one time. You know, I had a pastor a few years ago call me, and, and he told me this. He said, hey, Curtis, I want you to write me a sermon series. I'm going to preach it, but I just want you to write it. And I said, all right, I'll do that for you. How many weeks you want? He said, uh, six, eight weeks, just whatever. I said, it's going to cost you 500 The man paid me $500. I typed this thing A to Z. I know that doesn't sound fair, but look, I know at least if he preaches my sermon, he's going to be preaching the truth. So why not? So I write this, this series up. No joke. Dude pays me 500 bucks. I'm like, but here was the problem. It's the only time. Well, it's not really the only time. It's happened to me personally. But when I went to send that thing, I lost it in cyberspace, and I already had a check for 500 bucks. I had to write that thing twice. You don't store up your treasures in earthly vessels, all right? Now, fortunately, it was in my heart and I was able to write it. But there is no doubt that, that look, <clears throat> we put too much time, energy, and effort in things here that can be lost and will be lost. You know, um, oh man, let's just keep going. So let's talk about heavenly treasure. Let's talk about making investment in our heavenly stuff today making sure that somewhere today you're going to make a heavenly investment and hopefully your investments today and your strategies for your investments are going to, going to help make an appeal to others to make the same investment, understanding that first there was an investment made in them. Because the most important commandment in anything that you ever read, Jesus said this. He said, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is, is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. You've heard this, but that's he's talking about, hey, here are the investment. Here's an investment strategy. Here's a heavenly investment strategy for all of us. And that would mean more than anything else in this world that we would treasure and hold valuable all that he is and all that are his that we would hold one another in a valuable way because we are his heavenly treasures. You ever think of that? He's not concerned about your Mercedes that you drive. He's not, even though I might pray over it. I'm not going to pray to have one. That bill came out yesterday. I told him, I, he said, man, that old tractor sounds good. I said, yeah, I pray over it every morning. <laughs> it's a rust bucket. Let's keep going. It's so important that we pay attention to where our treasures are because it, it's a heavenly treasure. That one's not. It's Moz and rust are destroying, I promise. Come look at it. Anyway, I would mean to protect and I would mean to aid any one of God's children because they are his heavenly treasure. And then I'm, I begin to love people the way I should love, love them, and I begin to treasure my neighbors the way I should treasure my neighbors because I know that in God's kingdom, those are his treasures. That's, that's where his investment has been made, and that's where he would call us to make our investments, men. The greatest treasure I have in, in this life is the truth that I know the Father, and I know this, that the Father knows me. When, when we look at, at the Trinity and we begin to think about investments. Let me show you some investment strategies of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Father. In Genesis, the Scripture makes it clear that God breathed the breath of life into man, and he became a living 
being is what the scripture says. That word is ruach. It means a living breath of God. It means that he made an investment in each and every person that lives. He made a spiritual and a personal investment of himself. We are of himself. We are his greatest creation. So he made an investment in us. Now watch this. We should turn around with that investment and we should make an investment in him. Well, how can we? How can we bring to God anything? He created us. Well, we bring ourselves to him. We bring our time to him. We sit with our father. And Jesus said, I do nothing except for what I see my father do. And he's not talking about the eyes that see physically. He's talking about the eyes of the heart that lead him spiritually. The son, the son's made an investment in you. Did you know that? It's a spiritual and eternal investment. Jesus died as propitiation for our sins. Jesus was the exchange. That's what that word means. Jesus said, they are valuable. They are worth my investment. And his investment was the last drop of his blood and the, lost, and the last breath from his lungs. Well, then what do we do with the son? How do we make an investment in the son? Well, Jesus is our example. The more we live a life like Jesus, have you ever heard the term? I don't know if you, it's, it's this term. It's a very spiritual term. It's Christian. That's it. We're Christians. And a Christian means Christ-like. It means that not only did he make an investment in us, but we are making an investment in him in how we live our lives. What, what we do, how we speak, what we say today. Does our language sound like God has made an investment in us? Sound like we're following Jesus? And finally, the Holy Spirit, because if your language hasn't changed, if your actions haven't changed, this is probably the problem. It could be the third part of the Trinity. You understand the Father. You understand the, the Son. But have you been empowered to live a life that would help you make spiritual investments so that we, you and me, hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers us. He invades us. We just simply have to ask. The Holy Spirit opens our eyes. He helps us make kingdom investments. He shows us kingdom strategies for kingdom investments. The treasures in heaven are now because we have entered his kingdom when we said yes to Jesus. So you can be and should be and I should be making spiritual investments. We have no excuse. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Peace and joy come with knowing the Trinity. But it's through his spirit that he is with all of us at all times to be empowered. Look, so practically, practically speaking, I would say, hey, learn the investment that was made in you and make eternal investments, not temporal investments in this world. Loving God would be seeking first his kingdom, Matthew 6, Loving myself would be storing the divine goodness of God in my heart that I'd love myself enough to store his goodness in my heart. And finally, loving people, this would be acts of goodness towards his kingdom investments. There's all this stuff in this world, but I'm telling you what God's concerned with are the, is the investment that he made, which are his children and those who would become his children through an invitation with us. Invitation to come to Christ is the greatest investment you'll ever make in someone. Father God, thank you, Lord Jesus, that we know you. Help us, Lord, as we start looking at life and, and sometimes the temporal ways of life, and, and they, they tend to outweigh the eternal perspective that we're supposed to have. Father, bring us to a place of eternal perspective so we make internal and eternal investments for your kingdom purposes in our families, uh, with our children, with our wives with our friends, but also with non-believers. Help us to see them as pre-Christian. Father, empower us today through the power of your Holy Spirit. In your name, amen.